Everybody, it's Dove Hammond here, and I'm back at you with another um, blues harmonica tutorial. Uh, so today, I'd like to talk to you about a subject that I think may, probably doesn't get enough attention for harmonica players, and maybe it's a good thing to mention it every once in a while. And that is accompanying. Uh, how to accompany somebody? Not playing solos, not being the front one out, but what you do as a harmonica player while somebody's singing or while there's a guitar solo or a piano solo going on. What do you do? Now, there's a few things to talk about here. Um, first of all, you don't necessarily have to do anything. You could just stand there and listen politely and wait for your time for a solo. Um, you're not a bass player or a drummer. If the bass player or the drummer stops playing, the song collapses. If the harmonica player stops playing, well, nothing bad necessarily happens sometimes even something good might happen if you've been playing too much uh i remember when i first started out my mentor ted cooper uh if i was playing too much while he was singing he'd turn around and he'd go Shh. that was all i needed that was the most important music lesson i ever got in my life don't overplay and stay the hell out of the singer's way um but uh on the other hand you might be able to add something. You might do something nice without getting in the way, without doing something that disturbs. It's important to remember that because harmonica is not a guitar. Like I said, it's not a bass or a drum either. It's not a guitar and it's not a piano. So it, 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 what you can do to a company is slightly more limited than those instruments. It's not really built for that so much. And the other thing is that some of the, you know, it plays on some of the uh, same frequencies as vocals do. So certain things you do will really distract away from the vocals. So you want to be careful on those things. Um, how do you be careful? What do you do? How do you do something that will add and, and not get in the way? Well, here are a few pointers. First and foremost, the most important uh, advice you'll ever get as a musician is listen. Listen. Use your ears. Be, be uh, sensitive to what's going on. If you hear a singer in a certain place, maybe you want to lay back because you don't want to get in his way. Um, wait for a, an empty space where nothing's going on and then sneak something small and, and nice in there. Um, if you're thinking about fills, if you're the only solo instrument there, th that might be, you know, you can fill all the time. But if there's a guitar player there or a piano player there and they want to do little fills too, you got to sort of listen to what they're doing so that you don't end up clashing all the time. Wait for your, you can work it out with them too and say, you know, but, but you can also just listen and try to be dynamic about it. Um, dynamics is another important thing to remember. What do I mean by dynamics? Dynamics is how hard or soft you play. You know, when the band is playing very mellow, you don't come blasting out full, full power, particularly if you're playing something that's accompanying. You don't want to be, doing the right thing but way too loud for the singer even take your volume down or blow a little bit more gently than you usually do to do something that'll fill out nicely in the background remember what you're doing as a harmonica player when you accompany is you're sort of beefing it up the bass and the drums and the guitar they're they're doing the they're playing the tune you're beefing it up you're filling it out uh so do something nice and don't get in the way all that said, let's get to, into some specifics. What can I do? Um, well, first of all, like I said, not too much. So I'm not going to play all four fours of every bar. You know, I'm going to go taka 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 all the time. I'm going to find something sparse that's going to leave some space. Um, uh, uh, the nice thing about harmonica, and, and it's important when you when you're accompanying is to put in some chords. So if I'm playing in second posi position, I'm going to play on the, um, I'm going to play like for the one chord of a 12 bar blues. I'm going to play, I got a chord here, right? On one, two, three, draw. I got a chord. That's the, 
uh, so I can do that. But I don't want to, I don't, you know, I'm going to come in not on all four beats. I'm going to go like I did in that little tune I played. The little breaks. Okay. Now, there I did the chord. I could do the same thing on the four chord. I could blow out and say, I could. Not always necessary because it's kind of similar to what the guitar is doing. Um, what I like to do better sometimes, because I say, if there's a guitar player playing that chord and there's, if there's a bass player, he's generally playing uh, the root of the chord, you know. What I like to do sometimes is play the, the fifth note of the chord, okay? So if I'm, in, again, in second position, cross harp, um, if I draw in on hold five, on hold, excuse me, if I draw in on hold four or on hold one, I'm playing the fifth note of the chord. So I'm not playing, I'm playing, you know, so. And as a matter of fact, if I play on, on holes four and five, I draw in on four and five, I'm playing the fifth and the seventh. That's a nice blues thing. I could do this. And then when the band changes to the fourth chord, I'll do the same thing, only drawing in on two. Now, what do I do when when band goes to when the song goes to the five chord, to the five chord, the turnaround? Well, I can draw in on six. Sometimes there I'll pull a whole, I'll play throughout the whole bar, all four measures of it, because it's short and it's a change. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing like a long note the way an organ would, you know. And then you saw I blow, I was drawing in on six. When it went down to the to the four chord, I blew out on six. It does the same thing. I'm going to de demonstrate this here. I'm going to put on a backing track, and I'm going to do that what I just showed. Okay, here we go. Backing track. Uh, backing track is playing a blues in A, a twelve bar blues in A. I'm using my D harmonica. Okay, so I'm playing in second position in A. Just the, the basic chord of the whole thing, or the bass root note. Here I'm going to the fives. Is another little trick you can do. Sometimes when I'm playing those long chords like I did on the five, I was drawing on six. If you're good at tongue blocking, you got a pretty wide embouchure. I like to like make a chord and a half there, uh, uh, an octave and a half. I'll I'll blow one draw out of one side of my mouth and six draw out of the other side. So then I'm playing the root note and the five of that chord. I'm making a nice big kind of power chord. And then I do the same thing blowing out in the same spot. Just a little tip. Sometimes when I'm accompanying as a harmonica player, I like to do something that is a little close to what uh, horn players would do. Um, I'll give you an example. For example, um, the famous line from Sweet Home Chicago. Ba -ba 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 -da 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 -da. That's, you know, taken from a horn line. Okay, so here, here's what I do. You can simplify that. You could do it in different variations. Just 
to keep it more sparse in there. Now, that's all on the one chord of the 12 bar blues. Okay, A in this case, because we're playing with the D harmonica. What do I do when I go to the fourth? I do the same thing, starting from two draw. Okay, I was going two draw, three draw bend. And then down to lower three draw bend. And then, and then to end it, I'm not going to do that whole thing because it's short to turn around. So I'm going to just play those long notes here. Okay, let's try that again. I'm going to try that again with the uh, backing track. And this time I'm going to be doing those kind of horn lines. one was a little bit busy so you got to be careful with it but this is what happens this is where where what I was talking about before comes in about dynamics I might not be doing that when it's soft but a lot of blues songs play around with dynamics it starts off slow it builds up maybe for example if the harmonica player if the guitar player is playing a solo I won't do anything in the first round of his solo because I'm going to leave him more space and then it builds up. He gets into more intense playing on the second round of his solo. The drums start playing a little bit harder. I come in with something like that, and I build it up. I do something a little sparse at first, a little bit busier later on. Um, so these are things to think about. These are things you got to listen to and and try to sense what's going on. And be, but if you do it right, if you if you um, if you listen to the band, and if you're uh, sensitive to the to the dynamics, and you're always trying to see what adds to the general sound, then it, you'll find some really nice things to do like that. Um, when you're trying to play horn parts, um, octaves are very useful. Uh, so if you can tongue block and split to make the octave like uh, uh, one and four drawing and blowing, or three and six, a lot of times, like a lot of times I'll do that with that sort of semi-sweet home Chicago thing. Sometimes I'll do it. You know, going out. Uh, so these are kind of things to play around with. But the main thing is um, try to be sensitive, try to listen, try to do something that fits, stay in time, and, and see what works. And remember... It has to add to the general picture, not to get in anybody's way. And your point here is not to attract attention or be the center of attention, but actually serve what's going on, the vocals or another solo. So I hope you found this helpful and uh, I hope you learned something from it. And if you enjoyed this video, um, I'd be really glad if you gave me a like. Uh, if you um, subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots more harmonica tutorials live videos from my shows, original music that I've done, and more and more. And uh, if you have any questions or any requests, questions about what I'm talking about on these uh, videos, or requests if you'd like me to do a video on a particular subject, write them in the comments section. I promise to answer all comments, and I will try to do all requests. Uh, so thanks for watching.